Intel's got a little while to go before we get new CPUs from them. Apple's in big trouble with the EU and uh, benchmarks for the 9950X, so fast, big speed. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, June 25th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about some leaked dates that we've got for when we're supposed to be expecting Intel's next generation Arrow Lake and Lunar Lake CPUs. This is something that has been obviously the talk of the town. We've covered the Intel's Lunar Lake launch in detail because they brought us out for Intel Tech Tour in Taiwan, but now, of According to DigiTimes report, it looks like there might be a little bit of time for AMD to stay at the top. We're expecting the next generation AI 9 H365 Microsoft Copilot Plus laptops, whatever the heck they're called. They're supposed to be coming out sometime July 15th, and the equivalent Intel One in Lunar Lake is not supposed to be hitting until mid-September. And then from that point, we're looking at the Arrow Lake S processors allegedly coming out with the Z890 platform to come out sometime in October, which means with the launch of the 9950X in just about a month, oh, AMD is gonna have plenty of time at the top to continue to march on with their sales. It doesn't necessarily look like it's going to be good for Intel, especially with the fact that Qualcomm has their new Snapdragon X Elite chips out as well. But one of the big laptops that I personally want to pick up is now thanks to LG announcing they have a tandem OLED screen that's hitting the market in combination with Dell and their XPS 13 laptop. So tandem OLED was first seen in Apple's M4 iPad that recently released. Michael, you got that right? You, got it. you really like it? How's the screen? So bright and so beautiful. It is. It's actually quite nice. And the way that's achieved is from a tandem display. That's two OLED displays essentially stacked on top of each other, making it so that you can hit brightness levels that were previously not as easy to do, especially on an OLED setup. And LG saying that their tandem OLED panel is 40% thinner and 28% lighter than existing OLED laptop screens. Now, it doesn't appear like, especially in this XPS 13 lineup, that's going to hit the thousand nits brightness for HDR content and 1600 nits peak brightness on the M4 iPad Pro, which is part of the most immaculate part of that display. But rather with the XPS 13, we're looking at roughly 500 nits because it has a display HDR true black of 500, which is pretty good on, on the laptop and an SDR rating of 400 nits, which again is pretty good on the laptop. The only problem is that Dell is hiding this behind their upgraded RAM configuration. So it's gonna cost $300 more than the non OLED. OLED 2K display, but that's because you need to have more RAM on the Snapdragon chip. But that seems to be a pretty good alternative to picking up whatever Intel or AMD are gonna have out on the market, especially with the tandem OLED. I'm excited to potentially get my hands on that and check that out for myself. And you're gonna check out Reese now. He's gonna give you the deals and you can't stop him, I think. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy birthday to that one guy watching at the moment. And hey, wouldn't you know it, we have some deals for you. Starting off with this Corsair MM100 cloth mousepad for only $4.99, making it $5 or 50% off. And as a big fan of cloth mouse pads, grab two. But then carrying on with Corsair's offerings, we have this IQ AF120 RGB Slim Fans. This two pack of white fans is going for only $44.99 with included promo code, making it $26 off and a great way to squeeze some extra clearance out of your system. And then lastly, we have these Razer Kraken V3 Hypersense wired gaming headset going for only $74.99, making it $55 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, Apple's getting the opposite of a deal when it comes to being involved in the EU because the EU is coming out and saying that Apple has violated the Digital Market Act several times, not just once, but a lot, and in ways that are going to potentially cost the company hugely. We've already talked about the fact that Apple's received a $2 billion fine from the EU, but now it looks like they can be on the hook for 10% of its global annual revenue, which is massive obviously a little bit more than a slap on the wrist. But if Apple's found guilty, that obviously is gonna be billions, if not tens of billions of dollars they have to pay. But then if they repeat it, they could be on the hook for 20% of their global revenue. So the things that the EU are alleging aren't 
unbelievable. They actually, you know, might be par for the course when it comes to how Apple chooses to operate, but they're investigating whether or not Apple has made it difficult for third party developers to let users know about alternative payment platforms. That is, let's say you have something like an Audible subscription or an Amazon subscription. They want to direct you to the website because it will be cheaper there. They're saying that Apple now allows third party links, but they don't allow these companies to tell you that you can save money, which is a violation of the Digital Markets Act that the EU has passed. Additionally, there are also other violations of the fact that Apple makes it hard for third party app marketplaces as well as app downloads to be done, such as like with APK files or the Alt Store, which launched back in April. The fact that that's one of the few that have come out makes it seem like Apple is potentially hindering that from happening. And the third part of the investigation is the fact that Apple requires dev accounts to be made in order for all of that third party app store and web apps to be downloaded to the iPhone, which potentially could be in violation here. Apple essentially said, nah, -uh. This is, this is all fine. We don't believe that we're actually in violation of the DMA, but this is coming after the fact that Apple has already said that they're not gonna be rolling out certain features that we're expected to get in iOS 18, such as screen sharing, as well as all of the generative AI and Apple intelligence stuff, because they say that they're concerned about the interoperability requirements of the DMA that could force them to compromise the integrity of their products in ways that risk user privacy and data security. So it appears to be a back and forth between Apple and the European Union, Apple, gonna withhold features until the EU backs down and the EU is gonna try to find Apple out of that entire market. We'll see how this showdown, this stare down goes. I mean, if the EU finds Apple 20% of their global revenue and Apple says, no, we're not gonna pay it, are we gonna potentially see Apple removed from the market or would the EU say, oh, everybody kind of uses iPhones over here. Maybe, uh, maybe we don't do this. Who knows? We'll see, I mean, there's rules for certain levels of companies and the bigger you get, the harder it is to potentially regulate you out of existence. We'll, we'll see how all of this plays out. And I'm excited to see how the new AMD CPUs play out because we got our first benchmarks of the 9950X hitting the scene. The 16 core chip that's gonna be super fast being tested with DDR5 8000 mega transfer memory looks to be about 45% faster than the 7950X. Now this is in select benchmarks and it's obviously running wickedly fast RAM. Coming in at 8,000 mega transfers, that's more than most people have in their system on a 7950X. But according to this, at least in the various benchmarks that we're seeing in IDA 64, it's beating both the 7950X and the 13900K by big, big metrics. Now this is likely testing just a certain part of the 9950X's architecture and is benefiting from that tremendously. But if we start to test other things that might uh, more broadly apply to video games, we might see that the 9950X is closer to that 15% that AMD has been quoting for their Zen 5 architecture. But it does appear like in the ways where it gains big, it certainly does gain big. And that 9950X, I will remind you, is coming out next month and we're waiting on Intel's 15th gen Ultra 200 named Arrow Lake to come out sometime in October. Full quarter advantage, it looks like AMD is gonna have, which is gonna be rough for Intel moving forward. And let's see if your comments were rough from yesterday. We got Mr. Altoid saying, Strix Halo would be good for a Steam Machine 2 or a Steam Deck Home or a Steam Box. That is a brilliant idea. Give me a Valve-based console that's like an actual just desktop, like a replacement for a PlayStation. PlayStation TV. PlayStation TV, yeah. That's such a smart idea to have a freaking, uh, Steam box. They should sell that. They should try to do that again. They'll win this time, maybe. And then we got Floyd Fisher saying, so with Deepcool going away, will I lost support for my products? If you're in the US, yes. Yeah, that's unfortunately what it means. Deepcool is not allowed to operate in the US anymore. It's just, it's over, unfortunately. Now, I don't know how that practically is gonna play out. If, you know, you, you could maybe try to contact the retailer that you bought it from and see if they could potentially do something for you. Uh, but yeah, it does not likely, the warranties likely will not be honored. It's, they're, they're completely cut off at this point. And then Chris P. Bowl Sack says, fellas, Windows Defender is enough, which is in response to the Bitdefender ad spot that we had yesterday, which I absolutely would recommend for most people. Yes, you can have Windows Defender. I think the reason why we took the Bitdefender sponsorship is partly because I know there's a lot of people who don't necessarily trust Windows to be the thing that they want to use their antivirus for, or they have other reasons for having a third party antivirus. And so that's that's one of the reasons we chose to, to have that. But I mean, it, for, for most people, I 
think Windows Defender is is what they want to use, but you can also have additional security in case you want that. And I want to be done with this episode of Hot News, so I'll be back here to talk more about the hottest tech news tomorrow with you, my friends.